This is AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business, providing opportunities to discover information to help you run your business and guide your decision making. The more you know, the better decisions you make. That's the indirect that often they don't focus on, and it really, it's a lot of spend. It might be up to 15% of revenue. Uh, so it's the indirect spends, I think, most of our time should be spent. Okay, so what are some of the areas of indirect expenses that you find owners don't really look at as much as they should? So it, it varies by type of business, um, but essentially overhead expenses often are viewed as kind of behind the wallpaper in a business. Uh, they, they tend to set it and forget it. So let me use an, an easy one here to get us started. Payroll processing might be a good example. Uh, when we set up payroll processing for the business originally, it's a lot of effort, a lot of time. You want to make sure that the paychecks are correct come Friday night. You want to make sure that all of the 401k investing is accurate. A lot of time goes into setting up that incumbent uh, vendor. But over time, we often don't want to make a change. So we take the annual increase year after year, and we, we set it and we forget it. Now, take a proactive look at that same expense, there may be substantial opportunities for savings because it's an industry that's built on the idea that the client probably doesn't want to leave. In fact, some of our highest percentage savings are with payroll processing expenses. Also, often people, um, that would be a great example of a bundled expense. Often they're buying services that are bundled. And if they actually look at what they're actually consuming, they may find that they're paying for modules they never actually use. So when they originally signed up, it made sense, let's do this. But they're no longer looking at that report. They're no longer um, leveraging a, a certain service. Uh, so a, a frequent look, maybe once every two years, and just reviewing what services within that expense category and the subcomponents can yield a lot. So if payroll being one of the major areas, what is one of the other major areas that – in, that business owners uh, neglect to uh, uh, continually review, or which where you see they can save us could save a lot of money if they actually worked on uh, on a regular basis. Well, they should take all categories and create a matrix and identify on an annual basis which ones they're going to review in a given year and which ones they just did the prior year. But have a rotation because you probably don't have the time to review every category in depth. Uh, some categories you may be contractually obligated for um, a two- or three-year service window, so you don't have an opportunity on an annual basis to review it. But create that matrix where you're, you're really looking at uh, what's available for you. Make sure you're aware of renewal dates because, let's face it, some categories are in uh, evergreen contracts. So an evergreen contract means that uh, when you hit a certain point in time, uh, a clause kicks in that says, you renewed. Your silence has renewed you whether you like it or not. Actually, I'm being facetious here, you can opt out, but you have to hit a specific window uh, to raise your hand to say, I want to opt out. To be the most effective and efficient you can. You're spot on, Alan. So in the, in the procurement world, if you think of it, it's a three-legged stool. It's price, quality, and service. Now take it that to an organization. Let's say it's a fairly large organization where there's a lot of bodies between the shop floor and the, and the C-suite. That CFO or CEO they're probably most keyed into price, rightfully so. But that person on the production line is keenly aware of the quality requirements, keenly aware of the service requirements. So when you do procurement, make sure that you're bringing into the perspective everybody's voice because you've got to balance those three objectives to get to a win. So a win in procurement is that three-legged approach, and it's focusing on a value-for-dollar kind of equation, which takes into consideration all three of those. Hmm. A cheaper product that's going to break down your production line doesn't work. A cheaper telecom service that's not available uh, on a regular basis is going to impede the growth of your business. We've been talking in the first two segments about the show of the show about individual categories. Yes. But one of the most important things uh, I think we've talked about is actually creating a plan for expense reduction. And so how would you advise business owners to start that kind of planning? So let's start with your general ledger. Let's rank those expenditures by category, by largest expenditure to smallest expenditure. But let's, let's dive a little deeper. Let's go down to the supplier level detail, summary by supplier within each detail. That'll give us a sense of what we're spending and with who. 
Uh, and more importantly, it, it, we're going to understand where our big opportunities might be. From there, let's create an overall strategy. That strategy might be as simple as which, which business is available to review now. You may even be under contract with certain categories you can't look at this year. So identify the ones that we can look at now. From there, establish a goal for each of the expense categories of what you think you might be able to save. And if anybody needs help with that, give me a, give me a holler. Uh, and then from there, create expectations. Develop a team of people within your organization that are going to look at it. A lot of businesses have success by having somebody who's not involved in that expense category review it. So almost a peer review by somebody that's not involved in it. You get some great insights by that outsider that's looking in on that. And then more importantly, as you, you go into this project, measure your results. Make sure you're getting some outcomes. I guarantee you will. Your, this whole process talk reminds me of what I work with my clients on, which are SMART goals, uh, which is in strategic plan decision making, is you're specific in what you need to be done. The goal that needs to be specific. It needs to be measurable. It needs to be achievable. So you're setting a number that is actually achievable, you think is achievable. Who's going to be responsible for it? And then you create a timeline to implement it. And then I always like to add uh, and make it smarter by evaluating it and reevaluating it. Absolutely. A closed loop process. So it's not just stagnant.